Hi, folks. It's time to talk about deeper truths of the day of Pentecost. Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to his disciples. This is what we're talking about this week at our preschool. Even though the day of Pentecost won't be until June, we're going faster at preschool. And we're talking about the day of Pentecost because we've done Jesus' resurrection recently. Then we did Jesus' ascension into heaven. And, of course, then you've got to do the day of Pentecost. Because remember, the day when Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave his disciples the charge to go and make disciples of all nations, beginning in Jerusalem, proclaim the repentance for the forgiveness of sins in my name. And then he said, now wait in the city. Wait in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high when I will send the gift of the Holy Spirit to you, and then you will receive power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The disciples remained in the city, and they were praying on the day of Pentecost. This was now the 50th day after Jesus' resurrection, or um, the 50th day after Pentecost. I'm sorry, the 50th day after the Passover. Pentecost means the 50th day. So even in Old Testament days, Pentecost was Pentecost because it was the 50th day after the Passover. And it was also a festival at which the Jews, who had been scattered out across the whole Roman Empire, were now obliged to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the festival. And that's where we're at right now. Jesus' disciples were in the upper room. They were praying. And on that day, then, Whoosh! There was the sound of a great giant rushing wind, and tongues as of fire were distributed among them and settled upon each one's head. So what's going on here? Why did that happen with the coming of the Holy Spirit? Why, why the wind? Why the fire? Uh, well, of course, the word for spirit in Hebrew is the same word for wind. So when God breathes upon something dead, it comes to life. When God sends his Holy Spirit we become awakened, we become alive to God and dead to sin. And so that picture of the fire as well is that, that purifying fire which brings something out of uh, dross and brings something pure out of something filthy. Jesus had been described by John the Baptist as the one who would baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so the day of Pentecost comes, the Spirit is given with a visible sign of fire over the heads of the disciples. You remember how after Jesus was raised from the dead, the disciples still weren't sure if he even was alive. And they were hiding in the room with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. They required power, didn't they? They required boldness and confidence. And this is the day upon which the, everything changes. After they have now been reassured that Christ is alive, he has ascended into heaven, and he will be the judge of the living and the dead. It's the perfect time, in fact, the only time possible in which the Holy Spirit could be poured out in such a manifest offering like this. And Peter becomes the bold spokesperson of the church. And he presents the gospel in its purity on the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost is the day of St. Peter's first public sermon. Whereas Peter had been the guy, as you remember, who when asked, you were with Jesus, were you not? He said, I don't even know the man. The whole thing has changed now. He has now received an extra dose of the Holy Spirit. And if it had not been for him and the other guys and the rest of the disciples being filled with the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have the Holy Spirit either because the Spirit is passed on by word of mouth. And Peter's words were written for us. So we are not, at our preschool, we're not explaining uh, everything that Peter said in the sermon of Pentecost. But in fact, that's really where the, the big meat of this whole thing is. If you want to understand why was the Holy Spirit given at that time in history, what does the Holy Spirit do? Why do we need the Holy Spirit? You've got to hear Peter's sermon. Go to Acts chapter 2 and read his sermon, and you will see that he's talking about the, tran the uh, I want to say transpiring of events, transpiration of events, that Christ uh, comes down from heaven, performs all kinds of magnificent good works, uh, committing himself to the poor and the needy and the sinner and the guilty and bringing judgment and consolation to all those. He performs all kinds of salvation in the midst of the human community. Then he is rejected and he is crucified. On the third day, he is raised from the dead, having declared finally that this was the price, the price for our uh, admission into eternal life. His blood is the cost that was required to eliminate the guilt of the world. And so he ascends into heaven as one who now directs history and will come again to judge both the living and the dead. This is the perfect time for the Holy Spirit to come. In fact, the only time for the Holy Spirit to make his um, 
debut because all these things were necessary for us to understand who God is and to bear him in our heart. Certainly the Old Testament, there were Christian believers also who read the words of the prophets, of Moses, the law and the prophets and the writings, and they too understood a little bit about who the Lord was, who the Lord was going to be in sending his, in sending his son, and they believed and they were saved. And yet now it is burst open to all nations, not just the Jews, but every other person, every other language, every other uh, community under heaven is now offered the gift of eternal life by repentance of their sins, by turning to the one who has taken up their transgressions onto his shoulders and done away with them forever. That's why the Holy Spirit is given at this moment in history, because this is the one truth. This gospel is the thing that will save the lives of every person who believes it. And no other program, no other community, no other project, no other meditation, no other spirit is going to give this confidence, this assurance that you belong to God, not because of who you are inside, because of what kind of personality traits you have, or even because he has made you, but because he has bought you back from the things that have corrupted you and the things that have doomed you. There is no more corruption for those who believe in Christ. There is no condemnation for those who have accepted the gift of eternal life. Be baptized, Jesus, uh, Peter said, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for yourself, and you will receive the gift of eternal life as well. That's about all for now regarding the day of Pentecost. There's so much more. Go ahead and look up Acts chapter 2, and you'll find it there. Have a blessed day in our Lord Jesus.